to try to, to talk about the thermodynamics of chirality. So, as May I just, uh, just said, we have to try to find some kind of common language to be able to be, uh, to discuss between theoreticians or experimentalists, uh, etc. So, I will try to keep it, uh, to discuss about this uh, as the most simple uh, way, but please uh, just stop me uh, at any time uh, if uh, you want to, uh, some, uh, to be more, uh, for me to be more clear on some points. So, what uh, we uh, can traditionally see on this field, investigating the origin of the reality, there is a huge focus on understanding the mechanism of the self amplification So this is, of course, one of the most uh, crucial points to understand how uh, uh, a symmetric breaking can be, uh, can be obtained, and this will be uh, much more thoroughly discussed uh, in, these, uh, following, in the following sessions. But what I will try to discuss, actually, would be to discuss a much more general uh, way of this uh, uh, of understanding uh, thermocarality. And it's much more to try to discuss about what is the stability uh, of the obtained uh, non-alphemic state. Uh, what are the thermodynamics, what are the kinetics uh, of this kind of uh, systems. Um, <coughs> and I think that trying to develop this thermodynamic uh, aspect are very fundamental. And especially when we are dealing uh, with theoretical models, we really generally have to take a lot of care of what is thermodynamically feasible. Or if there is always some kind of questioning about the models that are being built, and this question should uh, assume a lot of points so that we can uh, be sure that, okay, these models are uh, real realistic, or maybe they are not realistic for this and that. So, what is uh, about the stability of uh, the non state. What is chirality? Very simply, if you take just one uh, object that is non-symmetric, so it can be some one uh, right or left form, so I will just assume it's just a plus or minus, that is, you have two forms that are imaged to one of the other in a mirror, and just because of the symmetry of the laws of, uh, uh, just because, uh, yes, the symmetry of the laws of physics, these two states are exactly the same uh, energy level. I'm just assuming that we, we are, really have uh, symmetric, uh, symmetric uh, laws. Of course, you can also induce the parity of annihilation, but just uh, assume that we are a perfect symmetric uh, world. And what we can have uh, between these two states, we can have interconversions from one form to the other, and we can have some kind of kinetics between the two. And, of course, very naturally, because no difference of energy, we have kinetic waves that are very similar uh, in both directions. And that is, if you have an object that is keyable and you just let it uh, naturally evolve, it will switch from uh, one form to the other at the rate scale. That is, an object is chiral only for very short, short time scales, but on very large time scales, it is blasphemy because it's switching from one to the other. Of course, this, this time scale can be very, uh, very different. If you take, for example, uh, uh, amin, uh, amin, that are three different substituents, uh, uh, it's actually a tetrahedron, so it should be uh, carrier. But we know that the speed, of, uh, the rate of exchange between one form to the other is indeed very fast, and you never are able to, uh, to, to, to have only one form on the other form. It's very quickly personalizing. And it's very opposite, if you take one, Homochiral crystal, theoretically, you be, would be able to switch all of the atoms inside these uh, crystals uh, to obtain some kind of rationalization of the, of the crystal. But of course, this relation would require 
time very very uh, it, much more huge than the, the the life of the whole universe, of course. So that is, if you just have a, uh, um, an asymmetric crystal, you will just say it see uh, it uh, uh, racemic, and it will just remain at this shape almost ever uh, for an indefinite time, just because actually its rate of racemization is much much more uh, lower. So. What we can see that is, if we only have one object, actually one object for sh sufficiently short, short, term, uh, short time scale, it can only be homochiral because it's alone. But we are systems actually are not uh, single objects, but collections of objects. So if we take uh, one object, one molecule, one crystal, etc., it can be either plus or, or minus. If you take two, it can be two plus or plus, minus, minus plus, minus, minus, etc., etc. The more objects you have, the more possible combination you have. And what can be very uh, easily seen with that is that you have only one possibility, always only one possibility that all the objects have the same quality. And uh, much more possibilities uh, to have uh, combinations. So, if we look at uh, what we have, let's say with 100 of objects, 100 of molecules, for example, we can see that uh, there are very few possibilities to have purely uh, homochiral uh, states, only right or only left uh, molecules. But very, uh, you have a very huge uh, distribution that is centered uh, on uh, around the resting state. And this is uh, the more uh, objects you have, the more molecules you have, this will be much, much more uh, centered uh, around zero. <coughs> and typically, uh, the average, the average uh, in mathematics test, of course, is zero. But if you look at the average of the mathematics test in absolute value, this is not zero because you have some kind of dispersion, and this average value in absolute value is uh, uh, um, one divided by the square root of the number of objects. That is, this week here, with 100 objects, we have an atomic state that is, on average, around 10%. And if we look what is the stability, the thermodynamic stability of the, the state, of course, uh, energetically, there is no difference. If you have, uh, because the left and the right have the same energy, if you have only left or a mixture of left and right, you have the same uh, energy. So, you have no difference in energy. But you have an entropic uh, stabilization. And if you look uh, at this uh, entropic uh, stabilization, that is uh, proportional to the logarithm of the number of uh, microstates of possibilities to build uh, the full uh, possible combination, you obtain that. So it means that uh, <coughs> we have lots of possible uh, thermodynamic states, and each one, from going from one dot to another, it means that one object has been realized. So actually, these are really thermodynamic states, and you have a huge energy activation between, uh, for people, the one to the other class. An energy activation for inversing one uh, object. And we can see that the most stable state actually corresponds to the racing state. And uh, so uh, this is very important to see the difference between the chirality in single objects or a collection of objects. One object can only be, uh, if the object is uh, asymmetric, this object can only be homochiral. So typically this is what you obtain when you are, uh, you are making the crystallization of, uh, of uh, conglomerate uh, crystals. If you have only one seed, you can of course only have one homochiral uh, object. Uh, <coughs> but if you have lots of objects, that is if your 
uh, system is sufficiently large compared to the size of your object, the only uh, stable thermodynamic state will be a racemic mixture of these homochiral objects. So, if we want to build a non racemic uh, state uh, of such systems, how, uh, what can we do? Uh, if we are at time scale that are slower to the rate of optimization, that is, uh, we can build a system that is very low, built on posit of, uh, left or right molecules, and you can avoid the optimization between them. Then it is possible to obtain one of the state. That, that uh, will be in a technical process. So typically, if you're making the crystallization of uh, uh, crystallization, uh, let's say, of uh, sodium chloride, it is possible, we know, to uh, starting from a rotating state, for a non chiral state, excuse me, to have, maybe, uh, for example, only one, uh, only one uh, chirality. And because, of course, the relativization of crystals is something that can't occur, we will be able to remain in this state. Of course, here, when I say that we can go in one direction rather than the other one, it means that to have that we need the autocatalytic process that uh, allows uh, to, go, to go only in one direction and not in another one. But whatever <coughs> it is, we know that if we have so this autocatalytic process, we will be able to reach uh, uh, this state. Uh, and the problem there is that if we really have this process in one direction, there is no error correction. And this is what we typically you obtain uh, uh, when you are doing the experiments, you have huge stochastic noise. Why? Because depending on the very initial uh, starting point, you may have small fluctuations that can have different intensities because it's stochastic. <coughs> and so if you start with uh, uh, a, a, not a perfect, uh, um, <coughs> depending on the state, uh, the initial state, uh, you can have uh, different in anthromelic excess because you can have only good seeds that are starting and you have a purely 100% state but sometimes you have two bite seeds one right and left that starts at the same moment so you have an almost racemic system etc etc and the problem is that it's only in one direction to have this kind of system of course sometimes you can uh, have this kind of optimization that can occur. This kind of optimization can occur explicitly, but sometimes we also have to take care because this can be indirect. When you are uh, <coughs> when you are uh, grinding a uh, solution uh, for that, we know that uh, we are destroying uh, uh, the crystals and building back, and so you can have this kind of error correction mechanism. But it means that you may go back and forth uh, from the two states. And so if all the transitions that are uh, allowing to go from the right and the left, uh, if all these types of semi-technique are really possible, it means that it should lead to a rationalization. So how is it possible to build a system where it's possible to go from one to the other uh, left and right uh, states of the object? without rationalizing the systems. Well, there is no the possibility that working in non-equilibrium state. That means you will need an energy input so that the energy input allows some cycle of reaction. And this is very easy to understand because if you are, um, for example, maintaining an excess you know, of minus and uh, you have more minus than plus, if you want to maintain that and it's possible to have relation between the two, it means that you will have a natural uh, 
uh, evolution, natural transformation of minus to a plus, because it's just uh, in this direction that the thermodynamic uh, the system uh, has to go. So if you want to maintain this difference, you will need the chemical system that is either there, you need this system to continuously perform the reaction in the opposite way. If you have an excess, you want an excess of minus uh, uh, rather than plus, it means that you need to force, because minus tends to go to plus, it means that the system must force in some way the transformation from plus to minus, so that we have cycles of reactions. And this stops energy, because when you are maintaining a reaction at a given rate, it will continuously dissipate energy. And this can be very easily calculated. So the entropy production from one reaction going continuously, it will be uh, this. And you can look at the minimum of energy that you have to input the system to maintain it uh, in an equilibrium state. It's proportional, of course, of the rate of uh, optimization. Uh, essentially, and the more important term is this one. It means that if you have a, a very uh, an exact relativity state, okay, no problem. If the thermodynamic state, you don't need any energy. But the more, the higher the energetic excess, the more energy you require. And at least theoretically, you, uh, if you want to maintain the perfect uh, okay, well, state, you need an infinite amount of energy. Except, of course, in the specific case where you have k equal zero, that is no optimization is possible. But if optimization is at least possible, you always need uh, energy. Of course, it's very tough and dependent of the kinetic weight. So if you have a very fast optimization, you will quickly need very huge amount of energy. And if the optimization is very slow, actually the profile is almost flat. That is, you can maintain some energetic excesses, not perfect one, but with a very low input of energy. But anyway, you will need energy. And this is very important. So, okay, so this is the two different uh, kind of systems that we have to, to take uh, in, uh, to have in mind that the kinet kinetically frozen systems and uh, the systems that are actively maintained in a non-equilibrium state. And what is important is these systems are able to maintain uh, no more world state even for time scale that are larger than the rate of optimization. And th this kind of system is very important because this is a system of life actually. If you take amino acids, you put amino acids in water, they will customize very quickly. Depends on the water and scale, of course. Very quickly, it means amino acids in water, they will have time, the lifetime of optimization is few hundreds of years. It can seem very slow, but for life, life I've been able, I've been able to maintain very huge quantity of amino acids in almost perfect, uh, homocular uh, states, and this for billions of years. So it means that life is really using, and really uh, using this kind of mechanism, life is really uh, consuming energy to maintain an homocular state that is in no way uh, natural. And I think that if we uh, want to uh, understand uh, the uh, emergence of homocularity, but stable homocularity, we have to keep that in mind. We need an active process to maintain uh, this state. And so the, the key is energy. What does it mean, consuming energy? Uh, this is the much more simple way to input energy in your system. This is uh, typically the Frank model. That is, you want energy, okay. You have high, uh, you have reaction from high potential, uh, high, high potential uh, compounds, and you have low uh, potential compounds. 
so that we have the spontaneous transformation from there to there. But if you have no energy, what will happen is as this uh, compound is getting consumed and this one is getting uh, uh, accumulated, we will have, of course, going to equilibrium. It means that this one goes there, this one goes there. All will have the same potential and nothing happens anymore. So what you need is, okay, for example, we have a flow of A, an input flow of A, and an output flow of C. We maintain A at a high concentration, C at a low concentration, so we maintain the potential, so we can have continuous uh, transformation, and we can maintain this non-equilibrium state between A and C. So this is typically the open flow system, the old the um, front borders, derivatives are based on this. There is another way to perform, is to say, okay, we naturally go from A to C. What if we recycle the system? That means, from C we find a way on another, so that we input energy, so that we come back to A. And this, we will also be able to maintain high concentration of A and uh, low concentration of C by continuously forcing a relation from C to A. But how can we do that so that it remains thermodynamically possible? Because if we say, actually, the same that we have a triangle of reactions, A between D, D, and C, C, and A, and because they are thermodynamics and thermodynamics, we can break the laws uh, of uh, thermodynamics. It means that all the weight of so that, if you just wait, the system will reach an equilibrium and you have exactly the same weight there and there, there and there, there and there, no net flow, nothing happens. It's when I show you in the first diagram, when rather than having different potential, all the potential are becoming equal. So what we have is to find a way to for the reaction from C to A so that you will have reaction, natural relation from A to B and B to C. Of course, it will also involve that you have natural, uh, also a relation from A to C. But globally, if uh, the, the system is sufficiently efficient, it means that you will be able to have this way that is more important than this one. And you have globally uh, an oriented loop of reaction. You are forcing the system to perform cycles of reaction. And that means you allow the system to be maintained in a non-equilibrium state. So the question then is how we can have this uh, force reaction, this activation reaction from C to A. Uh, because in this state, um, <coughs> the, uh, well, the more uh, simple way to perform that, say, okay, we just want to input energy. The only pure form sort of energy that exists, typically light. If you have some chemical reaction, photochemical reaction, that allows transformation of C to A, okay, it's one, it's very easy. Because this is with another irreversible process, and you're sort of pumping C to A, and so you're maintaining the difference of population, and you're forcing cycles of reactions. But this can be also performed very easily also um, by coupling uh, uh, the natural reaction with another reaction. That is, we can transfer chemical energy to this system. For example, if you just have this reaction here from A to B and you want to activate it, this it, uh, means that you have not to perform the reaction A plus B, but Direction, for example, A plus C, like A is B plus D. So what happens in this is that we have this activation reaction so that we transfer the chemical energy that is in C to the system. And it means that uh, <coughs> we have A plus C that is much higher in, uh, in energy than B plus D because uh, we have uh, high uh, potential component C rather than D. And so we are increasing the difference of potential between the two and you can have a first uh, reaction in this, a first reaction uh, in uh, this uh, direction. 
even keeping, of course, all the microreversibility everything. So it means that actually it's very the same that performing uh, this direct C to A. But actually, what we, we have there, it means that we have C plus an activated compound, that is A plus an unactivated compound. And that this coupling is through a flow of fuel, that's right with C, and you have some weight that gives A. And if you maintain the concentration of the fuel and let the weight going out of the system, then you are uh, uh, able to perform this oriented loop. And so you can uh, introduce continuously chemical energy inside the system without breaking any thermodynamic loop. And this is typically what is also performing in life. Typically, you have some enzymes that want to perform one reaction in one given uh, direction. And so what are they doing? They are just coupling this to the, to the consumption of ATP. And so that if you want to perform A to B very fast and very efficient in one direction, what the enzyme will do is it will actually perform direction A plus ATP that will give B plus ATP plus ATP. And so what is doing the life is with that, taking the energy of ATP and transferring this energy to something else, whatever. And we have uh, life is in the, uh, able to maintain an equilibrium state. Okay, so this was very general. Let's say what it can uh, be done. If uh, we want to apply that, not very general non-equilibrium systems, but uh, non-equilibrium systems that are allowed to build uh, homo So this is the very starting point. We have S, C, A, B cycles that is turning around. We can we are pretty happy with that because the case is non equilibrium that is totally useless. So we would like to perform some homochirality with that. Okay. We want to do catalysis. It's simple. It means that we have the XL, a, a roller compound or a white compound, and we want one cycle one cycle to generate an additional left uh, compound, for example. Of course, this is not really chemical because it would mean that we are producing continuously energy, uh, new matter, so we have to accumulate. And so if we are able to build this sort of very simple pattern, it will, it will uh, work because what is it? It's globally a, a reaction R plus XL that gives XL plus XL. But this is a lot of catalysis, and the car will also catalyze it. And of course, if you want that to work, and only in one direction, it must be an irreversible process. That means we need to input continuously energy there. And how we can put energy there? So just as I said, maybe okay, maybe you can put uh, light there, or we can couple that with the consumption of an energetic uh, fuel molecule and I was putting some weight molecules and so with uh, this pattern, no problem we have some kind of uh, maintained autocatalytic system ok and this is actually roughly what we have uh, in, the, in my experiment so this is a very simplified very schematic uh, way of representing the uh, model of Saito uh, it is also very similar to the model of Uva and of uh, McBride and uh, well, all this kind of model that will be presented in the details. But don't, we don't want to look in the details, but just look at the principle. What happens in this kind of system? Hopefully we have some models of some seeds of crystals are able to autocatalytically transform some aqueous molecules in Q, uh, Q1 molecules. And these cycles are ma uh, continuously uh, maintained active because in the system we continuously put energy by continuously crushing uh, the crystals and we are continually, continuously, when the crystals are growing, we force them to be degraded into smaller, etc., etc. And so we have some autocatalytic cycles that are right, or you can have also uh, the autocatalytic cycle that are left. And these two autocatalytic cycles are actually related between them. They are all consuming the same alkyl compound. 
So what we have, you have some kind of fight between these two autocatalytic cycles. And we can have, if this is sufficiently uh, autocatalytic, that is autocatalytic with a sufficiently high order, we will be uh, able to see a bifurcation. One of the cycles may overcome the other, and we may observe uh, the symmetry working. Of course, understanding how this was only represented by one cycle, understanding how this is possible to be unsaid, how it is possible to be very highly autocatalytic, is not very simple. And there are all, uh, several uh, models that were developed, and I think we'll discuss about this later. But the rough idea is really that. We just have a fight uh, uh, between uh, cycles. And the three fundamental points there is that we maintain a non equilibrium state so that we are, can have inside some positive feedback, some negative feedback, so that we have positive feedback which, uh, for each cycle, autocatalysis, and negative feedback between the two. And this is a really the very general uh, idea that is behind uh, this system. So, let's try now to uh, see how this can work in a little more complex uh, system. Uh, so this is the, a model uh, that I described a few, uh, few times ago that is based on activation, polymerization, epimerization, and depolymerization of amino acids. So actually what is it? It has, we have a system of amino acids. We want to maintain the system in a non-equilibrium state, so we have to input energy, so we are the activation of this, this uh, amino acid into activated amino acids and we, just, we allow them to polymerize. We allow, of course, epimerization inside this, uh, for uh, the, uh, inside the chain, that is epimerization, that is the racemization on one uh, chiral subunit uh, inside the chain. And we uh, allow the depolymerization back of these peptides into smaller uh, compounds. And so the idea is that we have continuously these transformations. It's always the same idea. We put energy, we are building, destroying, etc., etc., etc. And what can, act, uh, what can uh, be observed in this kind of system? How can we observe some symmetry breaking there? Um, okay. So this is a very simple subset of the net network. It can seem that it's quite uh, messy, lots of stuff happening there, and I only limit it there for the timer. This is a much more simple uh, system. But actually, we can see very interesting stuff there. Because if we look inside, okay, we have this kind of activation that are generating loop population. So let's have a closer view. What? This is what can happen here inside the system. We can have some activation of amino acids that react uh, with amino acid to form um, to form a peptide. We can have uh, the inversion of one center and hydrolysis back. And what this represents it is the activated inversion of one amino acid of D to N, and that this is autocatalytic because this is performed by another L. So inside this network is done we have the L that I could D, and this L forces D to become L. Of course, this is much more complex. We can look inside the model, we have lots of cycles. We have cycles that have a positive uh, influence of the electromagnetic excess, the L take a D to make it an L, but you have also some negative feedback there. Uh, um, a L that makes a L to make a D, etc., etc. You have lots of cycles. You also have lots of unnecessary cycles but that exist because the system is more complex. That you, you have cycles that are just taking energy and releasing uh, the energy back without tapping, performing anything. So you have these loops that are consuming energy for nothing. So you have a complex uh, system with lots uh, of cycles that are entangled and you can 
Okay, I won't give you the details there, but you can okay, see it here. You can see we the autocatalytic cycle. You can see here the uh, dissipation of energy. And, okay, you have just a flow of energy inside the system. And this flow of energy is distributed in lots of cycles. And some can act good, some can act bad. But what we have is that we have competition with lots of cycles. And if we look at that, okay, we have something that looks very complex. This is, uh, but we can see that if we look at the steady states uh, in an atomic excess, we have this equation that is roughly it's only a constant term multiplied multiplied by the square of, uh, of the atomic excess minus constant multiplied by the atomic excess, and this is the typical form, uh, the typical equation uh, that you find in uh, most of the uh, 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 systems that have uh, symmetric breaking because okay, it means that the anatomic state can be either zero, the resting state, that is a state state, or some two values that can be positive or negative, but opposed of, of course uh, each one uh, from each other, that say that you have two possible anatomic states. You we have the possibility of this situation pattern. And we can have some uh, uh, this kind of phase diagram that is, if you just look at the function these are kinetic parameters of the system, there is or some zones where you can't, uh, or where the only uh, uh, stable steady state is what they mean, but for some good values of the kinetic parameters, you can have some zones where the non rhythmic state uh, is stable. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So, and this is possible for given uh, parameters. That is, for example, homoperative team and big time dimensionally more stable, but at the same time, actual life faster, etc., etc. We have lots of possible conditions that can be formed from the models. But what is interesting is when you are uh, measuring experimentally the kinetic rate that are related. Uh, to the real amino acids, you find, you, can, you find that theoretically it still makes sense that this kind of uh, system uh, of, of, of uh, continuous recycling amino acid back and polymerization leads to a CV3 baby. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, we, can have a quick, we can have a quick look of what happens uh, uh, on the thermodynamic of the system. Um, if we really want to study the real system, we have to uh, include that alteration is irreversible. I mean, introducing the microreversibility. What does it mean? It means that we have to look at all the compounds, look what are their relative uh, thermodynamic energy, which one are the most stable, you have the amino acids, you have the peptides that are slightly uh, less stable. We have the NL, uh, the homochiral NL and NDD that are more stable than the DL and LD. And we uh, have some activated amino acids that are very high in energy. If we want to perform this, uh, this activation from L to L star, we have now that we want to really uh, perform the thermodynamic uh, calculation about this, we have to introduce the compounds that follows to input energy into the system. So we have the X compound, an activated compound, and the Y compound, the Y compound, so that we can perform with the activation L plus X, that is S star plus Y. And with that, we can uh, perform the same simulation of the system but taking all the possible reactions, but so we think all, uh, uh, taking in mind that we have to take into account all possible reactions. This reaction is possible from A to B. We also allow, we also need to allow the reaction from B to E corresponding to uh, all the thermodynamic parameters. And so, uh, if uh, we follow this evolution, we can follow after that what are the uh, production of entropy. Uh, for each uh, reaction. We can follow uh, what are the energy that is consumed 
by all reaction inside this network. And we can follow how the energy is, flow, uh, is uh, flowing inside this network. So, okay, I can give you the equation, and then it's very easy to to compute. This is, for example, uh, in the case of equalization, we can, okay, determine all these. But okay, what is important is that? What happens inside the system? So it's a system, we start from only uh, amino acid, and then we put energy, that is, we continuously activate the amino acid, so this is all the activated amino acid, so amino acid of decreasing, what is increasing then is the amino, uh, activated amino acid, and this launch possibility of polymerization, and so we have the formation of, uh, of peptide there and there. And this is something that is pretty good, uh, pretty nice to steady state. Totally one TV, but a steady state. And if we follow the energy there, well, it's pretty nice. We can see that we, uh, so here, uh, this is uh, the energy that, uh, that is entering inside the system in red. In black is the energy that is released by the system. And green is just the net difference. Uh, between what enters the system and what is going out. So what we have is that we have first a huge load of energy that comes inside the system and then it comes to zero. What does it mean? We started from a system that is pretty close to equilibrium, only amino acids, the most stable, uh, the most, the most stable uh, state in the diagram, and we input energy so that we force and maintain high concentration of uh, activated amino acid and high concentration of peptide. So we input energy, then it reaches a steady, uh, steady state, and as many uh, energy enter, enters and goes out. So okay. But let's look after what is happening after, further in the system. We can see that for a long time the same state uh, remains relatively, and then Actually, we were not uh, starting from exactly zero, but with a very slight excess, so that the system uh, will perform a symmetry uh, breaking. So we, from zero, we have here, um, you know, the material is there, so some serious state at about 75%. And what is interesting is that we uh, observe uh, this, uh, uh, this phenomenon, that is the production of entropy abruptly decrease during uh, uh, during the, the transition from one city state to another. And this is quite interesting. This is typically what this is observed uh, in this kind of system. Uh, this is called uh, this quite uh, some kind of uh, phase transition uh, because we have this change in uh, um, uh, this kind of external entropy production. And uh, I think quite recently uh, I published a paper uh, about uh, the Frank model uh, and that's showing what is the same uh, mechanism that they're showing uh, to you. Uh, but anyway, so we can add that. That if we look uh, in, uh, well, this is all, we can put all kind of uh, parameters, well, maybe this is not so important, but okay, what is really important is that now, we obtain this kind of uh, symmetry breaking uh, pattern. So, for the first, it looks pretty the same as the uh, usual stuff that we are used to see, that is, no energy, very few energy, then the system remains very emitted, so we have bifurcation points, and then we have two branches symmetrical from one to the other. But what was quite surprising is that if the energy flow is too important, the system uh, just goes back to a racing state. So what happened? And actually, we can follow, because with uh, all the, if we follow all the energy, we can see where is uh, dissipated the energy, where enters the energy. So what happens if you have very few energy? Actually, the system remains in a state that is very close to equilibrium, <coughs> mainly L and D, and okay, almost nothing happens. But when the energy is sufficient, we can see that these compounds and these compounds start 
to exist in huge quantity, and that uh, if, uh, uh, energy is really dissipated in these uh, cycles of radiation, that we will have dissipation of energy uh, during the activation, polymerization, depolymerization, uh, uh, etc. Et so, in this case, the energy can be distributed very efficiently inside the whole network, and we can have these cycles that are maintained, and these cycles are autocatalytic, so we can observe the symmetry wave. But if we input too much energy, what we can see is that the, all, the major components of this one and the major reaction is just reactivate, deactivate, etc., etc., etc. The system has just two energy. The system is just destructive, actually. We just input a, a huge bunch of energy and this system has no time to form this, uh, this component. And so we have no time to perform this, uh, these cycles. Okay, and so this is, I think that uh, maybe we have, uh, so just to stop there. And so with this lab, I think that I'm just uh, trying to show you how the thermodynamics can uh, uh, allow to study, uh, to understand what's happening inside the system, where comes the energy, and how this energy is uh, flowing, and how this energy is distributed uh, inside this system. So just if, uh, I have a summary. Uh, I think that there are lots of points that are very important, uh, very important to keep in mind. The first, that there's a difference between the currency of a single object, like a crystal, or of a system. Because it's really uh, important to, to keep in mind that, okay, one uh, object can be only homochiral if the object is the most stable. And so if you're doing the crystallization on only one crystal, yes, obviously it will be homochiral. So it's a very simple way to perform homochirality. But if you look at the system, this system that is composed of lots of objects, lots of, uh, typically lots of crystals, it means that this system will be racemic, but uh, not racemic as a mixture of racemic crystals, but the system as a racemic uh, mixture of homochiral crystals. And it's important to keep in mind that uh, this system, like the difference between these systems, uh, can be kinetically frozen or maintained by non-equilibrium state. <coughs> if we have a racemic mixture, we will need to input energy so that the system really behaves uh, in a non-equilibrium state, that we continuously input energy and the system is maintained at uh, the state. So this is really important. And so, yeah, okay. And of course, what we need, of course, all these autocatalytic processes, these are crucial. So I didn't talk uh, about, uh, talked about uh, a lot, uh, um, uh, didn't talk about this autocatalytic mechanism. But I think that you, we will have a very precise insight of what is possible, what is observed in the experiments uh, uh, all the following uh, talk. But what, what I just wanted to show you is that sometimes do not, do not uh, require very precise, uh, very template uh, mechanism, autocatalytic mechanism with a very uh, efficient system that one molecules, take another one and put its uh, chirality. This can be much more fuzzy. This can be some network autocatalysis. And uh, this is typically what is probably observed in all the example uh, of uh, autocatalysis of the literature. There are very complex mechanisms, typically as, as in the SOI uh, experiment uh, or in the very recently the Tsugueva uh, reactions. It's very complex mechanism with lots of reactions. And it's maybe very difficult to see where is really the autocatalysis. But the autocatalysis can be very much more fuzzy and uh, uh, hidden inside the whole network. And, uh, okay, so I think I'll stop there. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Very much.
ที่ทัดส่วนเคลียร์ผมอีกเนี่ยแบบยกระบบเอเนอร์จีอะไรก็ได้ใช้กลุ่มคอมเพลชันเนี่ยเวอร์ชันนี้ยังมีแต่ใช้กลุ่มใช้กลุ่มก็เยอะ and you so that energy in the quiet to crash six by six out to one actually oh you mean this one yeah yeah Oh, okay. Uh, in, in this? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, it looks mostly like a catalyst. No, it can't be only a catalyst. Because if it's only a catalyst and there is no energy entering, uh, yeah. it would mean that we have only equilibrium reactions between uh, the right, the, 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 between the R and the S. Yeah. It would be only equilibrated reaction. And if you have only equilibrated reaction with no energy input, there is no way that you observe a symmetry, uh, symmetry waking. So, so it there must be energy. So I do think that the uh, uh, starting component is at the uh, highest chemical potential is up to understood. Uh, uh, no, no, the energy is input by the crushing. Crushing. Uh, it's a crushing by the input energy. Crushing to generate S2 or S2. But, uh, but if you, if uh, what we have is that we start with a super saturated uh, yes. then, then we have crystals. Uh -huh. At the moment, we can say uh, that we are in an equilibrium state. Mm -hmm. That is uh, that so that the crystals and uh, the monomers have the same chemical potential when all the crystals are formed. And if you input uh, energy by the potential, you continuously crush. It means that you force crystals to be destroyed. So you have slightly less crystals, and you force uh, more uh, monomer to be dissolved. So actually, when you are crushing, you have a slightly higher concentration of uh, the monomer. So what you, you maintain a su the super saturated, super saturated condition. So it means that when you input energy by crushing, you give energy to your system by give, uh, giving a little more energy to the monomer for the dissolved the compound and you have a slightly less uh, energy for the crystal, so that you continuously force the monomer to be uh, crystallized, and they are forced to go back to the solution by the crushing, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, you know, chemical potential is a function of radius of crystal, you know. Yes. Radius increase, chemical potential is have to be higher, so uh, maybe uh, S6 to X, S2, or R6 to X, S2, mm. is uh, recycling. Uh, because, you know, uh, no, you no, 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 okay, uh, there is energy that enters the, the system, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah, maybe, maybe, okay, but I don't know exactly where the energy is entering. Because uh, you, maybe, uh, I don't know which, uh, maybe uh, you put energy when you have large crystals and you mm -hmm. destroy them, and then after the smaller parts will naturally dissolve. I don't know exactly uh, what is yeah. in all the system, at which point you have uh, just some integration that occurs, and in some place you are inputting energy. But whatever, there is some place that, uh, where you input energy. Where, uh, it's right that I just input yeah. it like that, maybe energy is there, maybe, I don't know exactly. But yeah. the idea is that energy is input in, is input, uh, in this system. Yeah. So, uh, maybe very fundamental reason yeah. why crashing is required is uh, to Perhaps large crystals to small crystals. Yes. To increase the chemical potential. Yes. Then dissolving the Yes, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah okay. What I said, okay. this is very schematic. I don't know, of course, exactly where the energy enters. And I think that we may discuss that, uh, this uh, further when uh, we were able to uh, describe, okay, what is the mechanism behind that? But yes, maybe, maybe, or maybe it's not exactly there that the energy enters, yeah. Keeping the system in a super saturated state is, I think, really a very nice way of seeing it. I mean, that's really the way how you yes, yes. the energy. In. But whatever is non equilibrium system, so you really maintain a non uh, equilibrium state. And this is really what uh, should happen in this kind of system. Yeah. But, uh, well, does the common of that, if you take such a solution mm -hmm. and you, you expose it even without putting energy inside, finally you're going to get a single crystal. Yes. It could take a long, long time, yes. but it could go into growing to a large single crystal, yes. and therefore without crushing or without... Uh, yes, but uh, you, you form only one object, only one crystal, and one crystal yes. is what I was talking about. But in this system, it's not a system of one crystal, but it's a system of a huge collection of lots of crystals, and that yes. they are actively being... Converting into one crystal, hmm? just converting into one crystal upon standing. 
because of it, it will fall it down. Actually, the surface area of the crystal, is, one is larger, of course, then this crystal is more stable than if you take many crystals. Yes, that's one, one crystal. Surfaces. Okay. Now, I want to just point out in the model that we just presented here, yeah. uh, in case of the amino acid and the, the peptides, yeah. you say that the hydrolysis of the homochiral peptide would be better, much faster than then. It can be. Uh, no, but actually Ben Bonner and I think Brack given the time some studies because they propose the model that if you let say get some peptides which are almost chiral it's short one mm -hmm. and then they form in the heterochiral one and if you idolize them they would you will idolize actually in the region where they are actually uh, heterochiral and Bonner actually had performed some experiment and shown that uh, indeed the cleavage is yes. heterochiral pleasure much more than the other one. Yes the second but, point is yeah. that the okay. okay. The second point is that uh, you mentioned also this racimization going from DL to LL, yeah. and you say that LL is more stable than the DL, yeah. I will assume that it's the reverse. Well, actually it is all this kinetic, you may be right, but it depends, very, uh, depends a lot of the experimental condition. And uh, actually, yeah, I, I have. I think that the problem of the hydrologists, I think, will not very much I have studied, I have studied the azure like this of, uh, uh, of this uh, peptide. Uh, it's not published yet, but in some conditions, you can really have a much faster hydrolysis of uh, homochiral peptide uh, than shorter peptide. It's actually a very huge difference between the experiments you're talking about and uh, what I'm talking about. Because this kind of system of very quite long peptides, and you really have some homochiral pattern, one, uh, uh, one change of chirality and another homochiral pattern. What I'm talking about is two pe D peptides, three peptides, very, very short peptide. And you have the much more complex mechanism. You can have cyclization of peptides, etc., etc. And you have lots, uh, lots of possible mechanisms. And uh, it's really a complex network. Actually, maybe it's a little more complex than just uh, polymerization, depolymerization. You have lots of stuff. But you really, experimentally, I really could observe uh, with no problem the possibility uh, of a fast hydrolysis of a normal peptide than uh, uh, um, uh, a heterochiral peptide. It's we really tested this experimentally or more experimentally? Yeah. yeah, 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 it's really possible. And uh, it's really, all these situations are really usually depending on all the conditions of the pH, on the temperature, on the... It's very much more complex than it can seem uh, at first. And uh, is that was the second point? No, no, I think the one was the problem of the withdrawal the second one was the... Okay, okay, so it's the same. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, okay, yeah. But maybe you can discuss about that, but uh, I think that on condition is really possible. But the problem is uh, not that uh, for this uh, system to work experimentally, it would require very high cell sele selectivities. And we have, uh, maybe it's, uh, we do not have enough cell selectivity with uh, the uh, short cell peptides. This can be discussed actually, yes. But it's, uh, it's possible. So I think the problem is that it's very important mm -hmm. that theory and experiments work yes, together. Yes, exactly, and exactly. That, uh, if you may want to make assumptions which are based on fair experimental uh, mm -hmm. demonstration, I think that, that is... Yes, 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 and uh, I, I'm going in this direction. That's what I totally agree. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was uh, confused about a point, uh, why you made one slide the way you did. You showed a, 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 a reaction that was going and then another big one that was going. Yes. With it. Could you show me that? Ah, uh, just to show how you can input energy. Uh, uh, what was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this. Well, wouldn't it have, if, if mm -hmm. B, if yeah, 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 it does, we have, yeah. if B had been above A, yeah. Wouldn't that make the point better? Yeah, 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 yeah. Destroy that one. Okay. Because that one would be spontaneous. Yes, yes, they are right. Yeah, yeah, well, of course, this would be working if A and B were without stress. I didn't realize that, but yeah, yeah, it's a very right. And even if they is about A, of course, yeah. it's still working. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I just to make sure I wasn't just Yeah, yeah, you have to tell what I should, Right, so if there's no, do you have any question? If there's no further question, then let's thank Rafael again.